Hey guys, welcome back to the video. It has been over a year now since I have done a network tour. So today we're gonna do a tour of the co-located rack, the office rack, the server rack in the basement, the other network rack. There's so many racks. So let's get started. Uh, let's begin here in the office. This is my office for those of you who have seen the videos. I have two monitors. These are dual 4K monitors. I'll keep that pretty basic at that. I'm still rocking the M4 Pro Mac Mini. That thing is amazing and super, super fast. But other than that, there's not too much more to my office. There is down here a switch. This is a Unify USW Switch Pro Max uh, 16. There is no POB on that switch, unfortunately, but it does work really well. It has 10 gigabit uplink on it, which is really, really nice. So. Additionally, I do have a single Raspberry Pi. For those of you who remember my previous videos in the previous years, I used to have a lot more Pis. I have gotten rid of a lot of them because I don't need them anymore, which is a good thing to have. So that is about all for the main area in my office. I will add, I do also have this G3 Instant Camera. I've had this camera in my office for quite a long time now. The camera works really well. I've had no problems with it. It just connects to Wi-Fi. It records to the UNVR. Back here uh, is the closet. I have all kinds of stuff stored in here. I also have like my Ubiquiti stash. All of it's kind of, I'd like to say nicely organized. It's not nicely organized, but it's all in the closet. And the best part about the closet is I can close the door and it's all gone. All right, so as we move into the server room, I guess this is the old server room, you guys will see I have a shelf with a ton of boxes from things I purchased. This is kind of cool. I always like seeing how many of a certain item I've purchased. You guys will see I have tons of crucial SSDs. It's crazy. Um, but that is basically where I store the boxes and there's some current project containers down there. But let's take a look at the rack. So this is the rack. This used to be the main rack of the house, the MDF. Uh, right now it's basically just an IDF. There is a switch right here. There is a UPS at the middle, and then there's the UNVR, which is the DVR from Ubiquiti. So we have a bunch of Ubiquiti cameras here at the house, and they all record to that Unify NVR. I have about eight terabytes of storage in there, and that is how everything records. And it is all super smooth and very nice. It is a single app to access all of our cameras, and that is wonderful. This switch right here is literally only here because I have all of these ethernet cables coming down. Um, I didn't want to move the cables when I moved my rack. I will show you guys the other rack in a minute. But before we do that, let's take a look at this desk. So this is kind of my soldering desk. This is like where I have a bunch of current products going on. Um, a lot of times I have all kinds of resistors, capacitors, um, and anything else you could ever think of. Um, and I do all kinds of soldering. I make a lot of LED controllers, all that kind of stuff on this desk down here. Um, obviously there is a ethernet cable right here. This room is a little bit of a mess. I'm currently in progress of running a ethernet cable to my doorbell. You guys will see a video about that soon. It's been a pain in the butt. As I went to college this year, I kind of simplified a lot of this stuff because, well, if I'm not here, who's going to use it? So a lot of it's really simplified, very basic. Uh, if I have to remotely troubleshoot something, I can easily walk my parents through what to do. And this is the rack that a lot of you guys have seen in my data center series. I am building a data center at my house, uh, but this rack is what has all of my servers, most of my networking, everything else. It's all in this guy right here. So let's take a look in this rack and see what we got going on in here. So at the top, we have a unified power distribution pro. That's basically a rack power strip where I can remotely control the outlets. Again, that is because if I'm gonna be not here, I want to be able to remotely troubleshoot things. I have a keystone patch panel with a few fibers patched in right here. I have a fiber for my internet. I have a fiber for the barn. I have a fiber for my office and a fiber for the back switch that you guys just saw in the other rack. Um, additionally, I have the Unify aggregation switch, which I'm at capacity for. I will need to upgrade that. But that switch is the core of the network. Everything connects to it at 10 gigabits per second. I have my fiber ONT, and then I have this Microtik Cloud Core Router. And that may seem way overkill for this, and it is a little bit overkill, but what this does for me is I have a single connection coming in from my ONT from the fiber provider, and then I'm splitting this off into multiple routers, uh, a router here, and then a virtual router running on here. And you may be like, why does he need multiple routers? Well, I want to, first of all, separate all of the data center stuff from the house stuff, but I also want to do all kinds of interesting rate limiting. I want to deprioritize the house traffic and prioritize the data center traffic. 
and I'm not able to do that with Ubiquity as easily. This is public internet right here that I'm routing to that switch, so I don't wanna run it through Ubiquity either. I wanna keep that kind of at the higher level um, and it's kind of isolated off. The ports are isolated on the Microtech. It's a little more secure in my opinion to do it that way versus run it through Ubiquity. And like I mentioned, this is one of the routers. This is the UDM Pro. I've had this thing for years. Uh, you guys will see I have my connection right here from the T-Mobile antenna. Um, I guess the Ubiquity uh, UMR. And then I have my connection from the fiber provider. And then I have a connection to the aggregation switch up there, as well as a fiber connection to that switch that we saw in that back room just a few minutes ago. This is another 24 port PoE switch. And this one does a lot of management for my servers. All of my servers have an iDRAC card. And this is basically what connects all of the servers together. This also connects things like the PDU Pro. Okay, so you guys may be wondering now why I have five servers at my house and I can explain. So these two guys may basically do like the back end services for a lot of the data center stuff. So think DNS or some kind of firewall, we could say, um, basically just management for a lot of the other equipment you guys are about to see. Additionally, like I said, it does run OpenSense. It's a firewall, a virtualized firewall that I'm using for the data center traffic. This server is mostly for actually customers uh, on the Beam Networks cloud. So there's a few SSDs in here and it backs up uh, very frequently to other servers, but this guy is what does a lot of the virtualization. So if you guys get a VPS from the Beam Networks cloud, it's most likely gonna be on that server. I will be splitting that up, the load into multiple servers very soon, don't worry. But for now, it's all running on this R630. Moving down, this is my TrueNAS server. I was always against TrueNAS until I tried it and now I love it. This is an R730 XD. And this guy has about 50 something terabytes of storage. Again, it's all running inside of TrueNAS. And it's, it also does have some SSDs in the back for caching. So it improves the ZFS performance. But that is about all I'm doing there. Uh, if you guys have S3 storage from the Beam Networks Cloud, a lot of the S3 storage will be on that guy as well. Moving down even farther, you guys will see I have three UPS units. This one is primarily for the home network stuff. So you could think the UDM Pro, the switch, the PDU Pro, and the aggregation switch. And then this guy and this guy are both for servers. They have similar battery capacities and all of these servers are kind of split up evenly amongst the two. So some of them prioritize this UPS, some of them prioritize the other one. It's just a way for me to balance kind of the power that's being used so I can get the most out of my battery runtime. And I did leave this guy out because he's not in the rack at the moment. This is actually a Ubuntu server that has about 80 something terabytes on it. Um, it's completely overkill. I don't use it much anymore, which is why it's not in the rack. And I'm hoping to clear it off soon and shut it down to save on power. This is the back of the rack. It's quite a mess as you guys have come to expect from me at this point. But what it does have is this Raspberry Pi that is reporting all of the UPS data to my own service I built. So it's reporting the data to the service. And essentially I'm able to use Grafana or SQL to visualize the data coming from these UPS units. I'm also able to get notifications from these guys as well. So if the power goes out, if there's an error, if there's an alert on the UPS, I'm able to see all of that data on my phone via email and through Notify, which is a notification uh, self-hosted app as well. All of the stuff you guys have seen so far in this video has been here at my house, uh, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that I have not shown you yet, which is over at the data center nearby. Uh, it's about 30 minutes away from my house. Uh, it's over in a co-located data center. I have a full rack. Um, so let's take a look at what that looks like. So unfortunately, due to the security of the data center, I'm not able to take you guys there and record while I'm there. Uh, but what I am able to do is I am able to show you guys a video that I took of my equipment. So this is the rack that I have. Um, and we have a bunch of servers. So let's start here at the top. We have the uh, switch. This is a access type switch to where it is just management for all of the IDRAX for all of the servers. So again, I have a ton of servers here and this is just how I can remotely connect to the servers if I'm not physically there. Next, we have the cloud router switch. Uh, it's a Microtech product. And as you can see, it's pretty much maxed out at this point. We have 16 SFP plus connections. Uh, each server gets two connections. So you can do the math. We only have about eight servers. Um, going down from there, we have uh, the server that I call Gopher 9. Uh, Gopher 9 has about 36 terabytes of storage. This is my bulk storage server at the data center. It does a lot of backups and stuff physically uh, that, are locate, that are located there. Uh, next, we have three servers. I don't know which ones these are, to be honest, but I have a huge Proxmox cluster with about five nodes. So these are three of the five nodes in the cluster. 
Um, moving down, we have two more nodes in the cluster right there. Those again are just a part of the cluster. I couldn't tell you which one is which. I really don't care what they are. Um, and then moving down from there, we have our two AI servers. Uh, the bottom server is mine. The top server is my friend's. Um, and he just upgraded the two P1000s, I think, from NVIDIA. Um, I'm still rocking the M40 or whatever I had on mine. But that is the, those servers, those are separate from the Proxmox clusters. And his is separate, of course, because it's not mine. So he has his own management of that. That is pretty much what the rack looks like. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so you guys can see it here on the screen. Um, I actually did add in my AI server to the cluster. So we have uh, six nodes in the cluster. Um, but across all the nodes in our cluster as a whole, we have 232 CPU cores. We have 738 gigabytes, gigabytes of memory. Um, and about 120 tibibytes of storage. So this rack is what basically does a lot of my personal virtualization, um, fun projects, website hosting, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't do any of that here at my house. I do it all over there. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, it runs the Beam Networks Cloud website. It runs all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of a nice spot for me to experiment and learn with new virtual machines and all that kind of stuff. I can spin up a virtual machine very quickly and easily there. And I'm really grateful that I'm able to do that. You may have noticed I did not show the barn in this video. I recorded a segment out there, but it wasn't really beneficial. It has not changed since last year. So if you want to check out what I have out in the barn or what I have out in the solar setups, check out previous year's uh, videos. Nothing's changed, so I'm not going to show it again. Um, but this video is running a bit long, so I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have a happy new year, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.